Sarah Fay has two decades of market experience with the media services industry and was a pioneer of the digital marketing space when she launched Cara Interactive and later helped Aegis Media to build its global digital marketing network, Isobar. She's become a well-known voice on the topics of social and mobile marketing and media integration. Sarah, welcome. Thank you for having me, Greg. Based on your LinkedIn profile, you've spent more than a decade as an advertising executive at Aegis, but for the past four years, your title has been free agent. What exactly do you mean by that? Well, free agent is the title I've given myself uh, because I work for myself. Uh, for, for 16 years, I worked as an advertising executive in the same company and, um, you know, basically worked for them. You know, a lot of the life choices you make are for, you know, for the company you're serving versus yourself. So as free agent, um, I get to do the things that I want to do and work with the people I want to work with. And I'm enjoying, you know, for these past four years, a new kind of career. What sorts of companies are you working with? I'm working with about a dozen companies as either a board of director or board of advisor in the digital marketing space or in the emerging media space. There's so much innovation that's happening in advertising today to help marketers spend their budgets more efficiently or with more impact or to take advantage of the social platforms. Um, new mobile platforms. So I'm experiencing kind of like innovation right, you know, as it's happening with many of these companies. What sort of trends are you seeing in the advertising marketplace? Well, there, there are a lot of trends happening in the advertising marketplace. Um, the mega trend is one that's been happening over the past decade and is continuing to accelerate. And that is that media is becoming more fragmented. Media channels are becoming more fragmented. They're there are more TV channels, there sure. are more digital websites, you know, um, more platforms, social media, mobile media. So, so the time that the consumer spends with media is just in lots of different places and they're becoming harder to reach. They're almost becoming, um, they're, they're advertising avoidant. <laughs> So uh, they You're talking the average consumer. The average consumer. We see more message skipping. Um, you know, we, we see more of a tuning out of message because it's just becoming, you know, uh, overwhelming. Uh, there are so many advertising right. messages sort of like that we encounter overload, in a day. Right. And then we also see uh, people actually participating in messages themselves. So, you know, getting information from other consumers versus the marketers themselves. So for, for marketers, the frustration is that it's harder and harder to spend the same amount of budget with the same impact and, and, and efficiency. Have you noticed amongst the challenges you're facing any rules of thumb or techniques that have been particularly effective even in the sort of media being awash with sensory overload, et cetera. There's no particular one way to come about things, but there are a lot of missed opportunities right now. So I, I would give you mobile as an example. Of mobile users today, more than 50% have smartphones. Sure. And almost a third of web traffic is through mobile platforms. And yet, a tiny, tiny fraction of budgets are going toward mobile, mobile marketing or reaching people through the mobile platform. So that's a gap, you know, where the consumer is way ahead of marketers. And we're seeing advertisers race to catch up. They want to understand the mobile um, platform. They want to figure out how to reach people there, but they haven't done that yet. And they haven't proven yet to themselves that the mobile medium can work but for them. But how is that going to work? Because we get inundated with pop-up ads when we're on our computer. We get we get robocalls on our telephones, we get email attachments, etc. Are you suggesting that when you go to open up your telephone, you're going to see an advertisement? Right now, a lot of marketers are translating mobile advertising to a tiny little banner, um, just like you would see maybe on a computer screen, only it's a fraction of that size. So sure. they've done what they did in digital years ago, which is kind of try to translate advertising to the computer screen. And, you know, it took a while to figure out how to make the, the creative exciting. Um, but there are really big opportunities um, in mobile to reach consumers while they're out and about 
in retail and give them messages in, in the time and place where they're ready to make a purchase decision. So Interesting. It's, Fa fascinating it, stuff. Yeah. You're watching The Language of Business. I'm Greg Stoller, and we're talking with Sarah Fay, a marketing industry thought leader. She spends a lot of time meeting with startups in the digital marketing space, working on their boards, and in what she refers to as real-time marketing. So, in preparation for the segment and knowing you as I do, there's a great debate out there as to whether social media success is defined as gut feel because it's so new, or the implementation of traditional pure play marketing analytics. How do you come out on that debate? Well, so real-time marketing is an exciting space, and I think that both gut feel and analytics have a role to play. So think about, okay, everyone is using the um, Oreo cookie example um, from the Super Bowl. I don't know if you saw the I, I Oreo. I know well, yep. Okay, yep. So, so Oreo runs a 30-second a, 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 a spot. It says, follow us on Instagram. And I don't know how many follows they got during that time. I'm, I'm sure it was millions, you know, millions right. right. And then during the blackout of the Super Bowl, they serve up a, an Instagram picture of a of, of a cookie and a glass of milk in the dark, and it says you can still dunk in the dark. That was only something that, that could have been done through intuition and gut feel with, with just an understanding that the relevancy of the moment was going to get them attention. Um, that said, analytics can also play a huge role in real-time marketing. Um, I work with a company called Social Flow that tells you what your fan base or even other fan bases are talking about in the moment and allows you to tweet a message about what your fans are talking about. And that actually gets you more shares and it gets you more responses. You know, it just makes sense. But, you know, that's amazing information to be able to take advantage of that you would never know unless you actually had a, the access to the analytics. So as you're sitting around the boardroom table and they're talking about corporate strategy, how much credence do today's executives really give to the marketing plan? There's sales, there's engineering, there's profitability concerns from the CFO. How does marketing stack up uh, around that board table? Well, I'm, I mean, you know, lots of times, okay, I work with a lot of startups and the product comes right. first. And I, and I believe the product should come first, especially in this day and age, because the product really has to work in order to gain credibility and in, and in order to, you know, get people supporting the product. Um, social media has had that effect. I right. mean, anybody who goes to a restaurant these days, you know, is probably going oh, to check Open at, Table or Yelp. Right. If, the, if it's not actually good, then don't bother marketing it if people aren't saying good things about it. Um, but, I, you know, so who you are as a company is a very important part of marketing, and marketing plays a role in that. Beyond that, I think, you know, marketing is really everything you know it it is it's what you say about yourself it's what you want other people to say about you um, it's you know it's what you're going to be in the future and you know what do you predict is going to be the single biggest change to the way marketing's done over the next three to five years TV advertising has continued to, to go up right. actually but money is coming out of other forms of media and into digital. And I think also people are trying to take advantage of cross-media opportunities. So for consumers who have their attention divided between platforms to try and find ways of, of gaining their attention through those platforms. A really good example is when you watch The Voice, people are tweeting right. at the same time. And, and actually that kind of cross-platform interaction time, is making right. you more engaged with the show. Well, advertisers are trying to get people in, involved with the message. So it's, it's really just about engaging consumers and trying to find uh, ways of getting them to participate with brands. Thanks, Sarah. Now that we've looked at two different approaches to implementing the contents of the marketing plan, let's meet a serial entrepreneur in the midst of building his latest company, but who also moonlights as a regularly performing guitarist and bass player. Drew Hanna is coming up next on the language of business.